couple other quick things to point out that I, I find interesting that have a kind of economic angle. And one of them is the, the story of the Wild West. Now, we all, we all know about the Wild West because we, we see Hollywood movies and we've read books about it, that in the Wild West, everybody's got a gun, and so therefore everybody's shooting. That, that seems to be the logic. If you've got a gun, well, naturally, you're just going to start firing it. <laughs> and it seems like the truth, though, in recent years, scholars have uncovered that our understanding of the Wild West is about 180 degrees wrong. And this is one of the 33 questions about American history you're not supposed to ask in my book, 33 Questions, is how wild was the Wild West? And their historians are actually saying the Wild West actually turns out to have been a great big bore, believe it or not. That when you actually look at it, it was actually a big bore. Um, Larry Schweikert from the University of Dayton uh, has estimated that fewer than a dozen bank robberies occurred in the entire frontier west from 1859 to 1900. So... <laughs> This means that there are more bank robberies in modern-day Dayton, Ohio, where Larry Schweiker teaches, in a year, in a single year, than there were in the entire Old West period. Now, Buffalo Bill Cody went around telling people that he had been wounded in battles with the Indians 137 times. Wow, wow, there's a lot of violence going on out there. And then finally, under pressure, he said, well, it wasn't really 137. It was one time, but it was really bad that one time. <laughs> it's really bad. But it was that this sells dime novels better if you say you were wounded 137 times. So actually the consensus, evolving consensus, seems to be that the Wild West was not really quite so wild. In fact, there is a book called The Not-So-Wild Wild West that came out a few years ago from Stanford University Press uh, elaborating on this and, and uh, displaying some of this uh, important scholarship. Well, what's interesting about it is here's a place where you would think this is a disaster waiting to happen. People are rushing out there, uh, by and large, because they want to get gold. It's been announced that there are gold discoveries there. People are rushing out there. Americans are going out there of all races. There are people from Europe going to California. There are people from China going to California to get gold. No one intends to make his home there. People are going to get their gold and get out. Now, the U.S. hadn't even set up a territorial government in California at that time. So you think, okay, so we've got... Uh, potential racial animosity, you've got greed, you've got the fact that nobody intends to stay there, so there's no, there's going to be any longevity. No, none of these people know each other, so there's no pre-existing community camaraderie to build on. This is a freaking disaster waiting to happen, and yet, through basically free market institutions, people voluntarily established organizations that defined and defended property rights, that adjudicated disputes, and historians looking back on this can't really believe this, that yet in the, in the absence of an overarching coercive institution, somehow people made this thing work. And, and, it, and it, it is quite an interesting story.